People of West Laramie need a ride. People that reside in West Laramie need a ride daily to survive. The obstacles. There are many obstacles and inaccessibilities standing in the way of elderly people and the rest of the community members of South and West Laramie. While there may be many public transportation options available in Laramie on the east side, on the south and west sides, there continue to be none. A lack of grocery stores and retail food stores, as well as lack of banks, schools, emergency services, and health care means serious obstacles for people without transportation. What if? Everyone knows or should know by now that the baby boomer generation is entering their final stages of life, i.e. retirement and final planning. If we do not make a, the remainder of their lives easy and accessible, what does that say for the state of our affairs when we reach that age? There are certainly no certainties. In any of us that have been close to our grandparents, parents, aunts, uncles, and mentors that have taken their final journeys know just how difficult life gets for them in those last years, months, weeks, and days. Making life easier for the elderly can be rewarding and eye-opening. Dealing with the people of this generation is directly, directly related to our aging infrastructure system of the states. It is in our best interest to bolster, repair, remodel, and or finally replace the thousands of pieces of infrastructure scattered around the country. There are even more aging American adults. Who will replace the millions of jobs, homes, and communities that will soon be vacated? By denying these people transportation, we are inviting more costs by having to cover four falls, which can occur in older adults who have difficulty walking or standing, exposure and hypothermia, which can occur if people are made to walk or be out in extreme weather conditions. Road hazards can occur when people are made to walk on roadways due to lack of public publicly accessible walkways and pedestrian only paths, all of which can lead to lawsuits against the city and eventually taxation and budgets are balancing. Stakeholders. Powerful positive stakeholders, grocery stores and retail food store owners, as well as retail and small businesses who can potentially receive more customer flow from the residents being transported. Also, and obviously the people in need of the transport. Powerful negative stakeholders could be highway department, city officials and politicians that may attack our proposal due to cost fears. Weak but positive stakeholders, things like this alliance and other public outcry, outreach groups that are starting from scratch to raise awareness and solutions to the issue. And finally, weak and negative stakeholders could include private ride sources like Uber, Lyft, and taxi cab companies that could potentially lose revenue. How and who to engage. The approach to stakeholder engagement, I feel, should start from the least likely and weakest stakeholders, namely the residents that could benefit from public transportation accommodation. After having some of the residents on board, literally, like on the action or the idea boards, we could engage the powerful positives, being business owners who can benefit compromise. After having both powerful and less powerful stakeholders on board with our alliance, we could offer, we would offer 
weak opposition in the form of private ride companies, further community networking and engagement that can help them through spillover avoidance. Lastly, once the other stakeholders of our map are aware and on board with our issue, we will engage the powerful negative highway city and political stakeholders that bringing our many positive stakeholders and powerful allies to pressure this group and accommodate our needs. That would be competition, although you can't see it on the slide. Mobilization. Mobilizing and reaching critical mass to get our issue to the table and engaged in debates can come easily after the competition approach to the powerful negative stakeholders. Once we have enough residents, businesses, nonprofits, social services, and other stakeholding professionals, as well as a large number of interested residents from the communities that can benefit we can then organize and propose our solutions to the public. We can use member lists, member drives, public service announcements, public events, printed publications, and community engagement events, as well as media platforms to make our issue more public and open to even more interested and vested parties. Reaching out to existing public transportation boards and finding other individuals or groups that may be working towards the same goals would definitely be beneficial. Creating or joining a coalition can broaden our members and open our current stakeholders and members to cross coordination on events and publications that can bring all of our similar ideas together. Coalitions can be a great way to increase and improve mobilization, and it can bring together, as stated, the members and other resources those members use to make the reach and scope of the coalition even more powerful toward the engagement of solving the problem. Lastly, hearing the many guest speakers and the many lessons from community leaders has given us abundant tools to use when and if we choose to become community leaders ourselves. The most important things I have learned is that the future and flow of community and community engagement is fluid and ever-changing. New policies, aging populations, and technological advancements are going to make community issues easier to see and recognize and easier to address. The most important lesson that I learned is that a community leader does not act or lead alone. Leaders must have a network of equally skilled and engaging members as well as an informed and open process that is willing to operate in public transparency. If and when you can earn the trust and enrollment of your community, not only are you empowered, but you are also responsible for the outcome of these resilient yet vulnerable community members. A person should not lead only if they have the, excuse me, a person should lead only if they have the best interest of community at heart and only if they can bring effectiveness to that leadership role. People that reside in West Laramie need a ride daily to survive. Thank you.